does this piece of hair need to be chopped? <laughs> Last night, my family here uh, all cut my hair. It was a full family participation event. It's on Instagram on the Jordan highlight by the time you're seeing this, but I think I need to do a little touch up. All right, so today I'm gonna be going through all of the makeup I packed for two months abroad. If you are new here, I've been living out of suitcases for the last eight months now about. So I did have more makeup with me before just for filming, but now that I am abroad, I'm in Jordan right now, then I'm headed to a couple other countries for two months total. So because of that, I had to really narrow it down. I'm just working out of one small suitcase now for two months. I'm also showing you some brushes I brought. Here's my little trio, my stack. So I have my makeup in here, lip products in here, and brushes in here. So I'm gonna go through everything and how I packed it and why I have things organized the way I did. A lot of these are my holy grail products and also just other stuff I'm testing and things that are small, like easy to travel with. So maybe it'll give you some ideas if you're also traveling or just if you wanna see like what are the things I've been putting on my face. Hope you find this video interesting, enjoyable, something. Thank you for being here. I'm gonna have everything I'm talking about listed down below in the description box. I'm guessing the description box is gonna be freaking massive this time. So <laughs> please read it, I link everything always everything is linked okay so i'm not sharing my toiletries this is my makeup and my makeup brushes so i've tried so many different cases throughout the years ones that are like have like the hard shell outside from amazon and for me personally for whatever reason i just really like clear bags no matter what it is like my toiletry bag is clear i just think it's so much easier to find stuff and now that i've been on the move for so long i just find that clear bags are a lifesaver i don't have to spend forever like digging through my bags looking for stuff i can just see what i'm looking for and grab it so all these bags are from amazon i'll have all of them linked down below i love these little small ones before i had a few of these these are good quality and good size where you can really like organize your makeup well so before i had my eyeliners and brow products in one of these as well like before i narrowed down my makeup even more they're easy to clean because you can wipe them out <laughs> Not that mine are super clean right now. I need to um, clean them. I have my brushes in here and I actually like to put my eye brushes in the same case. These came in a pack. You get like, I think half white, half black. I have my eye brushes separated out in here, which is just easier than having them all in one giant bag. And then my face brushes and sponges in here. And so when I'm moving locations, I can just put my eye brush in here, zip it closed. I will say this outside bag, this one isn't as good of quality. It's also from Amazon, but it's a different brand. This one's still holding up, so, but this bag is really good quality this is my main my main guy my big kahuna here this has all my makeup and i feel like these travel bags like if it can survive the last eight months of bouncing all over the place that's like a true test because normally you take travel bags on you know maybe like a weekend trip or a week-long trip and then it sits in your house for a few months until your next trip these have been like i've been using them every single day this bag also has a handle which is kind of nice and i just like to set it on whatever table i'm working out of and it zips all the way around which is also nice because it opens all the way up it's just easy to dig through here we go let's start with the makeup i'm not going to go in any order because i'm literally just going to be pulling things out of this bag keep in mind i know this is still a lot of makeup but i do still <laughs> film makeup videos as i'm traveling so some of the stuff is like if i wasn't filming videos i wouldn't have multiples of but I did keep my bag under 50 pounds. My whole suitcase was actually like 40 pounds, which is low for <laughs> two months, I think. So, you know, we're doing good is my, the moral of the story. Okay, a few face primers that I see right on top. I have the NYX Plump Right Back Plumping Serum Primer. This is a little travel size of this. And some of the things I brought because I had travel sizes of or I'm still testing, this is one of those products. I still don't know how I feel about this. Some foundations, I feel like it makes it look worse. It's a very sticky, tacky gripping primer, but both of these primers I love. The Shiseido is like a holy grail. It's the Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer. This has like a moisturizing lotion feel, but then when it dries down, it gives you this like soft matte kind of finish without being drying. So I love this one if I have like a very dewy foundation I wanna put over top and I need like a little bit of smoothing. This also works really well with their Synchro Skin foundation. And then this is the Makeup Forever Hydro Booster Step 1 Primer. This one's just very hydrating and adds a really pretty glow. Today I'm wearing a powder blush, but mostly I reach for the Kyger Kyer Weiss Cream Blush. I love this. I mean, I've, I've hit pan on this thing, and honestly, I can't remember the last time I've hit pan on a product because... I'm usually trying so many different things. This blush is so pretty. It gives you a dewy look, but it doesn't take the coverage away underneath. It is pricey, but I don't know, man. I really love the formula of this, and I do feel like it stays well on my face too. Today, the blush I have on is the Huda Beauty Glowish Berry Juicy. This is one of my favorite blushes. It's just such a pretty color. It gives like a nice glow without being overboard, and it's buildable. Where am I gonna put 
all of this makeup now that I'm emptying everything. I have a little tiny travel size of the Tatcha Silk Powder. I do really like this powder. It's one of my favorites. This one has like a little bit of a tint to it where on my fair skin, it's too light. But if I have tanner on, I do like it for around my pores. It does a good job of softening, blurring your skin. It is a loose powder and it has like a slight yellow tint. The One Size On Till Dawn Mattifying Waterproof Setting Spray. I actually talked about this in a speed reviews video. That video is already up. So if you wanna know like my full <laughs> thoughts on this setting spray, check out that video. I don't spray it all over my face. I usually honestly spray it like over my eye makeup with my eyes closed obviously. And I feel like it does help my eye makeup stay on like really well throughout the day if I do that. I haven't been getting like super oily or anything, so I don't really need like the mattifying, but it does help your makeup not smudge and just like stay on well. The big downside for me with this is that it literally smells like a full blown perfume. There's so much fragrance in here. So I don't know how great that is, you know, for the eye area, but my go-to brow combo lately has been the Kosas Air Brow in the shade dark brown with some kind of brow pencil. That's what I've been doing, I think for like months now. The Kosas Brow Gel, I honestly don't think is anything special like the formula itself. The reason why I do like it a lot though and why it's totally grown on me is because the color is like a really nice tone for my brows and it's not too much. It gives you like a soft filled in look. It's not too sticky, it's just like comfortable and it gives me the right amount of color where I can wear it with the pencil or by itself if I'm just like going out and want a little bit of color on my brows. So it's just like very easy wearable. If you're someone who likes a more natural looking brow, I think you would like this. And then I love the Joa brow pencil. This is in the shade black brown. Joa is a Korean brand. I think you can still get them at CVS. I like a lot of their makeup actually. Since brow products are so tiny and just for filming to have like a variety of products, I do have a few more brow products in here, but this is like a sample sample size of the Urban Decay Brow Endowed. There's a primer and then a color on the other end. This is a very pigmented brow gel. I don't reach for it that often because it like, it really fills it in. The NYX Brow Pencil in the shade Black. This shade is a little bit darker than I would like, but I have it. This is like one of those products that I truly feel like I can't live without. It's the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter in the shade 10 Be My Highlight. Drugstore face highlighter, it's a few dollars. It doesn't look like anything special in the pan, but on your face, it is so beautiful. I have it on today. I actually mixed in a little bit of another highlight I'll show you, but it's mostly this one. This is like a wedding highlight to me because it just looks like your skin is like beaming. It doesn't look textured. Of course, had to have my e.l.f. camo powder foundation. I have the shade 150C. I have it on actually like all over my face today because I didn't like the foundation I used today, which I'll tell you. So I just wanted to help like smooth it out. But normally I just put it around my nose and underneath my eyes and like on my chin a little bit. I mean, I like it all over my face as well, but usually I don't powder my whole face. If you have not dried it yet, I'm telling you, it is full coverage and it is blurring, man. It just makes my skin look so smooth. Every time I've stayed over at my family's house here, Sarah has been borrowing this and putting it underneath her eyes because it just does such a good job of softening and like brightening. It is so pretty. This is another one of those products I feel like at this point I can't live without. Another face primer here. This is like a baby travel size of the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. I'm like half out of this one. I really like this primer. I don't think there's a primer that compares. I did do a side-by-side -side comparison of this product with the e.l.f. primer. This one does do a little something extra. A product that I've mentioned in different videos but I haven't <laughs> expressed yet how much I currently love this is the Half Caked Morning View Bronzer. It's actually a cheek and lip tint. I just use it as a cream bronzer. The thing that is so special to me about this is the shade. It works for me when I have tanner on. It works for me when I have fair skin. It doesn't look orange. It is like such a perfect tone for my skin. It is an interesting formula in that it's a little more like balmy, tacky than other cream products I have. Even though it's more of like a balmy formula, it still blends out really well. It looks beautiful and it gives your skin this like really healthy glow. This is one that has really grown on me. It's also an indie brand. You can get it on their website or on Amazon. But if you have fair skin, or if you're around my skin tone, I think the shade of this is just beautiful. Lottie London Super Fake Mascara is the mascara that I have on my eyes right now. This and the Essence Lash Princess Mascara, both drugstore, and I just feel like they can't be beat. I love my Charlotte Tilbury push-up lashes as well, but still like, I don't know, man, this is just so freaking good. It does make a difference if you have a new tube though or an old tube, like you can feel the difference in formula. It has a comb applicator, which normally I don't like on its own, but this one I don't have to layer with any other mascara. It just does a really good job. Makeup by Mario Brow Gel. This is a clear brow gel just in case I wanted something to like hold my brows in place if they were being a little 
wild and out of control. I like this one. I don't think I would repurchase it. If you use too much, it can get a little like flaky looking. Of course, can't live without this stuff, the Purito BB Cream. So I have the old packaging for my lighter shade, which is 21, and then the new one for my tanner shade, which is 27. 27 is pretty tan, so it's like when I have a fresh coat on, if I don't have a fresh coat on of tanner, I have to mix it. I've talked about it for years, but it's still one of the best foundations of all time. I included this in my top five foundations video and it is just beautiful. It has also lasted really well in the heat here in the Middle East. It's very dewy, but it lasts really well throughout the day. It looks like skin. I can have it full coverage with a brush or I can like sheer it out by using less. So I just feel like this is a really good travel product as well because you can alter it so much. Just wish they had more shades, that is all. It's also affordable, it's around like 10 bucks. The foundation that I have on right now that I don't love and that's why I put the e.l.f. powder all over to try and fix it is the Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cover in the shade 2.75. This is obviously just a little like sample size one. This one, when I was in New York, it looked better on my skin now. So maybe just in like different climates, this one isn't wearing as well, but just looks a little too like heavy textured. It is very full coverage. I'm gonna keep this one in here just to like mix if I need to lighten a foundation or maybe add some coverage. It's not doing it for me. I've been loving this liquid blush by AOA. It's the Color Flush Liquid Blush in the shade Rosewood. Really pretty tone, blends out easily. This is like a dollar from Shop Miss A. It has a little doe foot applicator so you can just go like that on your cheeks, blend it out. Very easy, you can also use it as lip color and it's like a pretty peachy kind of summery color. My go-to eye primers are the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot or the Anastasia Eye Primer. This stuff is amazing. This little like baby deluxe size, whatever it is, has lasted so long because you need seriously the tiniest dot of this and it spreads really far. I love that this also has some pigment to it. So it has like a light white, ish kind of color. It's not a pure white, it's like light nude, but it's light enough if you have fair skin, and it covers. So if you have like freckles or discoloration on your lids that you wanna cover up, it does even everything out. It really makes your eye makeup stay on well throughout the day, makes your eyeshadow pop. Adjusting a little bit because my um, back feels like it's about to pop in half here sitting on the floor. So I put one of my foundations in this little travel jar because foundation bottles can weigh a lot. And if you're trying to keep the weight down in your suitcases, try to avoid traveling with like the heavy glass jars. So this one is the Dior Forever Matte Foundation, one of my favorite foundations. And then I have a few full size bottles of the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation right now, but I'm gonna be de-potting, or what do you even call this, de-bottling these and getting before I leave a couple more of these ones just to pump into here so I don't have to bring the full heavy jars and then I'll give my family here the rest of the foundations. But one of my Holy Grail foundations lasts amazing throughout the day. If you wanna hear more about it, you can check out the Shadow and Schmooze video or my top five foundations video I talked about this in both of those. I brought two concealers and I would say these are like, for the last year, probably my top concealers of all time, unless I'm totally forgetting one. I do really love the Hourglass Vanish as well, but the Haley's Rewind Blurring Full Coverage Concealer and the Patrick Star Turn Up The Base Butter Silk Concealer. Both of these are beautiful full coverage. This one like sets down really well, so I don't necessarily need to set it with powder. Both of these do. This shade light one is too dark for my fair skin. They do have lighter shades, but I just, you know, not trying to have 5 million shades of things right now. So this one, I've just been making it work and it looks good when I have tanner on as an under eye concealer, but full coverage, beautiful formula. It's like creamy, but it's not too creamy. It sets down. This is also really great as foundation. So I actually use this shade as a foundation mixer when I have tanner on. It's the shade Medium Dark 3. It has like a very golden kind of undertone to it. When I'm packing for a trip, no matter how long it is, I try to pack products that are versatile and I can use in different ways just to keep the amount of products down, you know? Speaking of a versatile product for me, the Dior Backstage Face Glow Palette. This is unreal. I use this all the time, almost every day. If I'm not using the Essence one, I'm using this. It is so beautiful, you get four shades. I love mixing these two together. I have a little bit of this one on over the Essence right now. I love using all of these for eyeshadow, this over the lips, this on the inner corner. I have the white shade on the inner corner of my eyes today. And it's good because again, if I have tanner on, I can adjust the shades and like find a shade that will work for me no matter what my skin tone is that day. For eyeshadow, the only palette I brought with me is the Wet n Wild Always Naked palette, which says a lot. I love this palette so much. I can get warm looks out of this, cool looks out of this 
have it on today. It blends out easy. My top came off just like two days ago, by the way. I think I dropped it on accident. I can do a warm look. I love the cool tone shades in here. There are like a couple dud shades for me, like this one I don't love, and the white one is just like a little bit flaky. Other than that, great palette. The mattes blend out, pigmented, beautiful. What is next? I wanted to have a couple eyeshadow options where if I just want an extra pop or I want something like more shimmery, more dramatic, these are both lightweight, so I was like, might as well throw them in. The AOA Buttercream in the shade Love Story. I used this in my last Shadow and Schmooze video, but it's like a pinkish, creamy shadow. If you get this, get it out of the pot and kind of like warm it up on your hand and then apply it. And then these are one of my all-time favorite products. I feel like these are so, I was gonna say underrated, but they did blow up on TikTok. And I feel like this is one of the TikTok products that is worth the hype. I've used these <laughs> for a couple years now, like since it came out. Keep discontinuing them, so I'm kind of scared, like certain shades you can't find online anymore. I don't know if you can still find Thundercloud, but it's beautiful if you like a really pretty silver look. My all-time favorite lash glue, Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive with Aloe. The best, doesn't irritate my eyes, stays on. I actually like both of these for my lower lashes, the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash, and then the AOA Tall Lash Mascara. I think that's the first time I've ever said that. Say, it, say that, said that without tripping over my words, then I trip over a said. But both of these have the comb applicator. Look how tiny this one is by AOA. So it's like perfect for the lower lashes and it doesn't transfer down. It's nice and black, it separates well. I also like this one for the top lashes. This has been what I've been using on the lower lashes for years is what I have on today. I brought one black eyeshadow. This is the Sugar Pill Bulletproof. I'm still playing around with this. Sometimes I feel like it really transfers up and then other times, I feel like it doesn't, so I don't know. It is very black. Just had a sneeze attack. I think I inhaled some black eyeshadow. I am working on it, but I feel like it does transfer up a lot of the time. A couple more brow products here. I have the Sephora Eyebrow Pencil. This is their waterproof brow pencil in the shade Chocolate Brown. I do really like this one. It has a nice fine tip. I talked about this in my last Speed Reviews video if you wanna know more. And I also talked about this, the Profusion Good Brow Day Waterproof Brow Pen. Also really like that one. Nice drugstore brow pen with a really good tip. This is the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Warm Sand. And I have this again as like a mixer for tanner or cream bronzer, I can use this one. Even when I have tanner on, I don't reach for this one all that often. So I feel like I don't totally need it. This is like <laughs> the cutest, smallest little liquid blush I've ever seen. You are so cute. Look at this thing. It even has a doe foot in here somehow. But this is the Rare Beauty Blush in the shade Grace. My favorite shade is Happy. You need. <laughs> the tiniest amount of this. Like this is very pigmented, which I actually like liquid blush formulas more like this, where you can just put it on, blend it out, not worry about it. This stuff is very pigmented, so you just have to be careful because you can easily put too much on. It stays on. This is very long lasting liquid blush. I do like the shade Grace. It's a little bit more like mauve pink, but if you're purchasing one, I like Happy the best. I have the one size turn up the base BBB cream in the shade Light 3 Neutral. This is again, like a good mixing shade for me. It's very neutral, like almost grayish, which I actually really like on my skin tone. It is full coverage. It's more of like a full coverage matte foundation, but it is very pretty and it's also pretty lightweight which is why I threw it in here. I have another eyelash glue but it's the Vlore Lash Glue. I'll use it if I can't find my Kiss one but it stays on too well like you know when you take off your lashes and then you cannot get the lash glue off for like four days whereas the Kiss one holds my lashes on but I can still get it off when I want it off. I hate when you have like lash glue clinging to your lashes for five million days. The Natasha Denona Mini Bronze and Glow. This is like one of those products that I brought solely because it is tiny, but this is like the powder bronzer that I have with me. It is pretty warm toned. It's like more of a kind of like terracotta color, but I also like this shade for eyeshadow. I actually wore this yesterday as eyeshadow, and I also like this shade as eyeshadow. I can put this in the crease. This shade can also actually look pretty as more of like a blush tone, but for the most part, I have like enough cream products to where I usually just use creams and I can get a nice bronzy look using creams, speaking of. The product I use for that AOA Amber. This is actually a concealer. It's their top secret concealer, but I use it as cream bronzer. It is the prettiest shade for cream bronzer. I can use this on my fair skin or when I have tanner on. Obviously it doesn't show up as much when I have tanner on. It looks more like a natural color, but on fair skin, it is so pretty. The undertone is beautiful. And because it's a concealer, it gives you like coverage on your cheeks as well. 
don't use it under your eyes. Don't get this concealer to use under your eyes. It's terrible under your eyes, but it's really pretty as a cream bronzer. The eyeliner that I had packed, but that exploded everywhere was my NYX Epic Ink Liner. I love that liquid liner, but because it exploded, I got a different one here in Jordan. And the name has already totally come off, but it was the Isabella DuPont. The actual liner though, <laughs> like if you can find this in your country, it is pretty good. Like it's long lasting. It's not matte. It does have like a little bit of a sheen to it, but it is super black. It has the kind of applicator that I like and it's a nice fine tip. It was actually very hard to find this kind of pen liner in Jordan. Everything was like felt tip. I'm glad I found this one. It's been doing the job. I have a couple setting sprays, but this actually isn't the Makeup Forever setting spray. I emptied the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray and put it into this because this was a lighter bottle that I had. I like both of them. I actually like the Makeup Forever setting spray better than the Charlotte Tilbury, but I just, that's what I had. And then I love MAC Fix Plus. I'm almost at this little baby travel size. This is a really good one. If my makeup is looking like I need to melt like the powder, just melt all the products together, or if my face is looking like too heavy, too textured, I'll spray this on and it just really melts everything in. Mac Fix Plus is still, to this day, after all these years, one of the best setting sprays on the market. The liner that I have on my waterline today, I love this, is the BH Cosmetics Power Pencil in the shade Beige. If you need a waterline eyeliner that is like this cream color, this one is so good. It's pigmented, stays on the waterline, it's affordable, and it's not too dark. Some of them on fair skin can look like a little off if they're too dark. Oh, I have another brow product. Great, the e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. This is one of my favorites. Do I need 14 brow pencils? No. I have four pencil liners. The first is an oldie but a goodie. I love this one, the LA Girl Shockwave Neon Liner, but it's in the shade Blackout. Very black, I love this for the waterline. It just goes on so well on the waterline, stays. And a few others that I've been testing, the Pat McGrath, this transfers like crazy. I actually could like toss this. Transfers up to your lid like crazy. The Gwen Stefani 24 hour gel black pencil. This one is super black. If you wanna know my thoughts, I reviewed these in speed reviews and the makeup by Mario Brown, perfect brown eyeliner i really like this one but this is nice and pigmented stays on well on the waterline and on top i have a pair of little tweezer man tweezers in here eyeliner this is makeup forever aqua resist talked about this in my last speed reviews as well but this is a brown shade it's in the shade 02 matte wood these stay on super well if you want to know all my thoughts check out that last video because i talked like in depth about it aoa velour highlighter in the shade clumsy this is another holy grail item the formula of this is beautiful sometimes is my favorite shade, but I got the shade Clumsy when I went to the AOA store in Houston. Sydney Grace Highlighter in the shade Satin Kicks. This is unreal. This is another indie brand I tried in the indie makeup video and it is just stunning. I also love this because I can use it as eyeshadow. It's really pretty all over the lid or on the inner corner. Very intense, but still looks nice on your skin. These things always end up on the bottom. <laughs> of my bags, the other ends of brow pencils. Don't know what you belong to actually. Now that all this is out, I'm going to clean out that makeup bag. I've reviewed, I think like all of these lip products at this point now between speed reviews and my last waves and rejects. So I'm gonna just like quickly power through the lip products and basically tell you what I brought. Think about doing a reel, maybe it's already up by the time you're seeing this, what's in here, like swatching all of them so you can see like what I brought and what my go-to lip colors have been. So if it's up, I will link that down below. Oh, this one I actually got in Jordan, the Gabrini Ultra Waterproof eye and lip pencil. It's in the shade number 29. It's actually really pretty. Like it looks like elf tea rose. This is what I'm wearing right now. And that I've been wearing all the time It's the cheekbone sustained lips in the shade sand. Really pretty everyday kind of pink color. Do I have it layered with Lawless Forget the Filler and Daisy Pink? Holy Grail lip product as well. Goes with so many things, so pretty. The Sephora Dress to the 90s, number 29 contour lip pencil. These are like an interesting formula. They're like more of a gel satin kind of, they're not matte, they're not like a matte liner. So you can almost put it like all over and use it as a lipstick. And the Koki 517 Nude, Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. <laughs> I mean, look at the size of this thing. Could it be the lip contour in Honey Beige? Patrick Tosh, she's bold liner. This one is the darkest out of all of them I have. It's like a darker brown. So when I have tanner on, that's when I'll wear this one. I don't like using this on my fair skin because it looks like way too dark. It's like a dark brown. This one has cool packaging because it just clicks up from the bottom. 
so you don't have to sharpen it, which I love. In here, I also have a NARS sharpener that has the big end for like lip products and also the tiny end for everything else. Love this. My other go-to pink, light pink by AOA. It's a full lips plumping gloss. Nude Suede by Makeup by Mario. Really pretty neutral nude color. More cool toned actually. Huda Beauty Prom Night. This is a really long lasting bullet lipstick. Did a TikTok on this, still love this color. It's the Maybelline Ultimate More Blonde. This is such a pretty color. Looks really pretty on fair skin. Milani Keep It Full Lip Plumping Gloss, really good formula. And color, this is in the shade Soft Rose. I love this for if I want like a more neutral, cool toned lip. Natasha Denona. I need a rose lip crayon. I don't use this one that often just because it can look like a little too peachy. And Fenty Beauty Sugar Kiss. I decided to keep this one in this bag instead of my Glossier. I like the Glossier way better, Glossier Blue Sight, I'll link it down below. I like it way better than this, but it's a similar kind of thing and I wanted to keep trying this one because it's newer, so. I brought a few pairs of lashes, the Gala by Kiss Lash Couture. These are like very dramatic. I just wanted these if I wanted to do like a really intense makeup look for a video or whatever. I've been really into cutting my lashes to make them smaller towards the inner corner. So I just have random ones that I have like cut in here that I can reuse a few more times. And my brushes, I'm trying to figure out like what the best way is to do this. I'm gonna try to list all of them down below, but if I can't list them down below, I will list them on my FAQs on my website so I can just include that one link. And then if you click that, it'll link all the brushes because I don't think I wanna do like a whole video on all of my brushes at this point. Maybe I will eventually, but I'm just gonna fly through them real quick. Three sponges I brought, two from Amazon, same ones, the ones I always use. I will link it down below, holy grail sponge. And then this is like a powder sponge from AOA that I love for under eye powder. I haven't used it in a while though, because I use the brush I made with Sigma. I designed a set of three brushes with Sigma. And of course I have all three because I use them all the time. They're like <laughs> my perfect brushes because I got to design them from scratch. So we have the powder brush I use today, under eye concealer brush I use every day, and then the under eye powder brush that I also use if I powder my under eyes, which I did do today. So these are no longer available, but I always get questions about them. The best thing you guys can do if you do want them to come back is to let Sigma know, not me. I would love for them to come back. So let Sigma know <laughs> if you're interested. Two of <laughs> the same of each brushes, because these are some of my holy grail brushes here, Haley's Beauty. Their foundation brush is so good. It's like a dome shape. It's nice and compact, but it blends out really easily. It gives you like a really smooth application of foundation. And then I also love their, this is technically their powder brush, but I love using it for blush, bronzer, anything. Even like if I want a dusting of highlighter, like I'll use the Essence highlighter with this and just dust it over my forehead. Really, really nice brushes, good quality. I've used these for, what, a couple years now? And I also have two of the e.l.f. Putty Primer Applicator Brushes because I try to keep one for cream bronzer and then one for cream blush, but <laughs> I usually just grab whatever is closest. I can't rave about these enough for cream products. They're so good because they're tiny, they fit where you want them to on your face, they're compact and dense, so it doesn't like lift up the product. Like I said, I was just gonna name these and I'm like, Telling you in detail about them but anyways i have another second one of my concealer brushes i have this aoa f30 brush i actually like to use this for like a few different things for me it's like too flimsy for my under eye concealer but i like to use it for various like powder products i don't even know sometimes i'll use it like around my nose just to put a little bit of the elf powder or sometimes like highlighter i just kind of use it for whatever i'm feeling like that day and then two highlighter brushes. I love the ColourPop F24 and the Milani, I think it's just like the Milani highlighter brush. The Milani one is more flimsy, ColourPop is more dense. And then the ColourPop F29, I like using for bronzer or blush as well if I want more of a dense brush. This is denser and smaller than the Haley's Beauty one. So I don't know, just depending on the product, sometimes I'll use this or if I really want like a pigmented blush look that day. Eye brushes, so like I said, I keep my eye brushes in here. Okay, I have a lot and I think I'm just gonna list these on like I said, either the website or down below because I have a ton from a bunch of different brands here and I don't think it'll be that interesting for me to like name off 30 brushes to you in a video. So I guess I'll just do a few highlights to call out and all the other ones will be down below in the description box. My brush that I use every single day for eye primer is the Sephora Pro Concealer 71 brush. Love this to put on eye primer. Recently been loving the Flower Beauty. It's like a double-ended brush from them. This one is really nice for the crease. This one is good for an all-over lid color or actually could use primer with it. The Sephora 26 brush is really nice for the crease. Same with the Lunar Beauty LBE2. It is light, like it's, I don't know, it has a very light feel to it. 
which is good for traveling. Where's my brush that I can't live without? Okay, I don't even know. I don't think Sedona Lace is still around anymore. I'm not sure, but the Sedona Lace 904, I still haven't found like a perfect exact dupe for this because it is just softer than any of the other brushes I've tried like this. But it's what I use if I wanna put something on my lower lash line as far as eyeshadow. Sigma E25 go-to eye blending brush. I have a few of the Morphe M513s. These are still like the best big fluffy brush I've found for the crease. Those are kind of, I would say the standouts. Oh, Sigma E56 I love for the inner corner or for putting like a lid shadow on in like a specific area. They'll all be down below, but I don't feel like I need to go through and name off all these. Okay, ooh, I love that sound. <laughs> Putting brushes back in. Does that sound good to anyone else? Just a little brush ASMR for you. Brushes are one of those things that can surprisingly weigh a lot, so I did narrow down even more brushes this last time. All right, so that's everything. Wow, just went through a lot there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting or helpful. Got to see some of my favorites and other stuff I'm trying. Let me know if there are any kind of specific makeup videos you want me to film while I'm traveling. Bye, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Oh, yep. My back is done so after that. Shorma is like my new post-filming routine. Okay, goodbye.